Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. We have been covering the Epstein case for now three years. And one of the things we keep talking about is Jalene Maxwell got 20-year sentence. She just got moved to a low-security prison in, in Tallahassee, Florida. No photos or videos of any of that. And no one is asking this question except this one little article in the Los Angeles magazine that I found online. Jalene Maxwell in chains, that's an over-exaggeration. She's probably playing ping pong right now in slippers. What Maxwell may know about Jeffrey Epstein's John Doe's, the secret of what happened to Jeffrey Epstein's homes between her new biles and many powerful men will sit with the jailed socialite in a tasselated prison. Will she ever squeal? And I want to talk about this and because there's a little glare and fix that. I want to talk about this because we keep asking how come none of her names, that none of the people connected to Epstein. We saw the FBI when his uh, penthouse in New York City was raided in the summer of 2019 when he was ar arrested. We saw all these boxes and hard drives and files, but where is any of that information? We're, we're, we're hearing none of it. And I wanted to bring on the show, um, we've had her on numerous times. She's a, I would call her an expert on the Epstein case. Uh, Whitney Webb, who's got two books out. Hello, Whitney. How are you doing? Hi, doing well. Thanks. So you've, you've, you've covered this extensively. You have literally two books that was one going to be one book that then became a two volume series because <laughs> you went into so much detail, but yeah. specifically, and you, and we've had you on the show before and you and I have even just talked off camera about all of this. And what is so curious with the Maxwell case. I mean, I've, I've talked about, you gave me the information, judge Allison, Nathan, she's obviously works with the quill and dagger. She's, she's from the, was appointed by the elites. Um, you've got Maria Comey was the prosecutor who just kind of went, Oh, I guess we can't have any more evidence. You know, like she just sat by and let that happen. There was only four witnesses that spoke. I remember in the Larry Nasser case, um, there was a hundred victims spoke, but only four could speak. And what has happened, so Jean-Luc Brunel was arrested. He hung himself. No no talk or mention of that. No no, no photos, no nothing. He, mm -hmm. again, probably hung himself with a paper T-shirt like Jeffrey Epstein did. Maxwell was, um, on the day the SCOTUS memo was leaked of May 2nd or 3rd, that's the day Judge Allison Nathan said, I'm going to limit the amount of time she could potentially be sentenced to. That happened, of course. And then... Oh, crazy. She gets moved to a low security prison and yeah. there's no photos or videos of any of it anywhere. There's never been photos of, of prison Galant. Well, I guess there's been some alleged ones, like the one that came out where she's like, I have a black eye. <laughs> and it was yeah, like a little yeah. bit here. And she was, I don't remember why she said she had a prison guard, something maybe, I don't know. Um, and the key thing here, and this is what you talk about. And this is why I really <laughs> want to get with how, how, what, based on all your research, is that they've always wanted to seal off. Yeah. They want to just make it seem like, oh, Epstein, we got the one bad guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Maxwell yeah. was, she yeah. was his secretary. We got them. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're yeah. good. And it's so obvious because also in December of last year, during her trial, 118 pages of flight logs were released. In that, it showed Trump had four more flights on Epstein's plane. There was originally only one. Now there's a total of five. And what was so curious is MSNBC and CNN didn't go nuts with that information that you would have thought no. they would have crucified him. But when you go after him, then it opens up everybody else. So, yeah. and if Maxwell gets a, appeals, my thing, my theory is if she goes to, a, she wants to go to appeal and if she gets acquitted, that'll happen the same day. Like Trump gets arrested or Biden has a heart attack or some crazy <laughs> event will happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If, so, it, if it happens that way. Yeah, sure. What, what, how, what do you, how do you, how do you see all this? I know you've been tracking it. What, what do you, how do you see this? Okay. So remember that, um, Ghislaine Maxwell's indictment deals with stuff in the 1990s. So it's supposed to be written. So it's out of scope of the sweetheart deal. So the sweetheart deal itself, not challenged, which means all the other co-conspirators, uh, Sarah Kellen and all of those guys, well, can't touch them still. Um, and the important thing, too, is that in terms of the scale of the sex trafficking operation, it grew significantly uh, with the beginning of the early 2000s, which is where you see Prince Andrew uh, enter the picture in a big way and all of that. Right. Um, and that's part of the sweetheart deal beginning then. So these are very specific cases. 
in the 90s. And most of Epstein's accusers, there's very few that predate 97. And if you look at the indictment, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 94 to 97 is the range that they were going with here. In addition, it, the indictment itself states that the the victims that are in this suit, uh, uh, some of them, I uh, forget exactly how many, accused Ghislaine Maxwell of sexually assaulting them. She wasn't charged for that, right? Which you would think would be a, a bigger crime technically. And, you know, it, it was mostly about transporting minors across state borders for sex and stuff like that. It was like very specific stuff. It could have been, in my opinion, based on what we know, a lot more uh, extreme, what she was, right. uh, it, you know, it, it, just in terms of setting up the indictment. And that's the prosecutor side, right? That's not the judge. That's not the defense. That's like the people that are like, we're going to nail Maxwell coming up with that, right? Um, but I think the key component there is that, you know, all the other people are uh, still off the hook, basically, because of the sweetheart deal still being um, in force. Um, so beyond that, I think, you know, the fact that she's been moved to happy, uh, happy days prison, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, Disney, yeah. Disney prison. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, remember how Epstein's prison sentence was too? He like was allowed to go on work leave and like go home for like part of the day and all this stuff, you know? So, um, I think, um, Maxwell agreed not to squeal basically. Um, and right. that's why she got sent there. Otherwise it would have been like, well, did you see what happened to Jean-Luc, <laughs> uh, in, in France? You know, I think it was pretty clear. And, uh, I mean, let's keep in mind too, a lot of people are like, oh, we don't know how Robert Maxwell really died. But what matters here is how Ghislaine Maxwell thinks her father died. And she thinks her father was murdered by her, her words, Mossad renegades working with Sicilian contract killers. So I think, words. yeah, it's, it's quoted in the New York post in an article that I think is from 2000 or 2001. So this is even before Epstein was like infamous or she was infamous for anything. And that's her talking about her father's death. And even her siblings admit like, yeah, Ghislaine totally thinks he was murdered and she would know because she was the most involved with his activities at the time. And when he died, she was the, the child that came onto the yacht and, and shredded the documents. Yeah, this very what much was seems, what, right. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, she, she'd probably know. <laughs> there, there's the, the rumor is, and I is that you know she's she has this so called kill switch that if she goes doubt down, it. I doubt it. But like, it's all gonna go. All the information's gonna go out, and doubt so. It. She probably doesn't have that because I think she'd be. You know, she works for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And so that kill switch would be with that somebody, not with right. her. You know. And. That's what yeah. I think anyway. I don't think this was just contrary to the mainstream media narrative. I don't think this was just Epstein and Maxwell planning a big thing all unto themselves, sealed off from other elites or powerful people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why there's no footage of her. There's no mugshot. I mean, people would always nope. say they, and, and the, the, the claim well, Epstein's was that mugshot didn't even come out till after he was dead. Right. The one that was taken in 2019. Right. So like, I don't like, I don't like getting tinfoil hatty. I just don't, I just don't, but you <laughs> could surmise that they're all still alive, hanging out on some Island somewhere. And we haven't seen any bodies or mug shots or, so, I mean, so when you're bringing in the whole intelligence thing to this stuff, it's all a big question mark because the CIA, Mossad, whatever, they get away with literally anything. So, I mean, who really knows? I mean, I think Epstein's probably dead. Um, you know, and so, you know, some people are like, oh, blah, 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 Whitney, you're crazy for even like entertaining the pasta. I, I the the point is, I don't a hundred percent know because the when he died, the camera feeds were cut and there was all this like suspect stuff. So I mean, really no one actually knows what happened to the guy technically. You know, so I, mean, I can't, I don't want to gatekeep and be like, I definitely know, right. but I think it's most likely that he was look. Uh, or Brunel was too. Um, and because and they were Maxwell. liabilities. I mean, yeah, in a, that's the way the mob does it. If a mid-level guy gets busted sure. and they're worried he's going to squeal, he gets, he gets taken out. I mean, that's and remember Epstein was busted a first time and got heavy protection. And a lot of times history, not just for people like Epstein, uh, think about, you know, banks, for example. I mean, there's histories where banks have gotten into trouble one time and they've been bailed out once, but they don't bail them out a second time or, or stuff like that. I mean, it, um, it's hard to like, continually risking that big cover up over and over and over again. 
as, as if it's the same entity or person, it just uh, becomes easier to get rid of them. And so what I what I pointed out at the end of the book is, um, you know, I, I and we've talked about this before, how there was this move from the sex blackmail in like the early 2000s and all this stuff, uh, which is the the years that most people focus on for Epstein. There was a move into Silicon Valley, uh, Epstein's uh, courting of, of Edge, uh, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell going to these Kleiner Perkins, which is a major Silicon Valley venture capital function, her getting married to Scott Borgeson, who like runs a, a tech startup that's funded by Google's Eric Schmidt, um, her hanging out with Jeff Bezos, how, why does um, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Reid Hoffman, Elon Musk, I mean, pretty much every head of a major big tech company has some sort of Epstein or Maxwell tie. Yeah. Um, so why is that? Well, I think they knew um, because the government and the intelligence agencies knew that the future was electronic blackmail, because then you don't have to invest money in uh, a trafficking operation and maintaining residences with pinhole cameras. You don't have the liability. Uh, you can just find dirt on someone in their digital footprint. And, you know, the you type their name in the right database and you have all the dirt on them in the world because we're all being illegally surveilled by the NSA and, and the government. And mm -hmm. um, so they can just blackmail everyone whenever they whenever they want. And so that essentially means that people um, like Maxwell and Epstein stop becoming assets to protect and they become liabilities because they know a lot of stuff. Right. And so they don't need people like that anymore. Um, they needed people like that for several decades, as I point out in the book. I mean, this practice goes uh, back a really long time and it was really first brought into its own by organized crime and then organized crime teams up formally uh, with U.S. intelligence in World War II out of wartime necessity. And then it continues after the war because it's great business. What do you know? Right. And so anyway, with, with the fact that we all have smartphones in the digital revolution and all of this stuff has also changed forever the nature of blackmail. And so they don't need people like this anymore. They're just liabilities um, at this point. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, since, you know, we know uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about Eric Schmidt before. I mean, Google has been doing data collection for the intelligence community since I think as far they back as it. Amazon, yeah. enjoy your Alexa. Um, it's probably <laughs> going to blackmail you someday. <laughs> yeah, probably. So, um, yeah, you ever like been mad alone in your apartment and screamed and said something awful just to <laughs> they're going to record it and put it out there. But something. it's already happened with Alexa, right? They like had to admit, I think that they they've recorded people on several occasions and like stored it. Yeah, like fights or uh, people, you know, getting it on and stuff. Sure. So, of um, they I don't know. People willingly invite that shit into their home. So it makes you really easy to blackmail if you're the CIA. I mean, uh, when, um, what's his name? Petraeus was CIA director. I think it was like 2012. He was like, uh, yeah, your kitchen appliances are going to spy on you for us. Um, you know, like the smart fridges and smart, whatever. Yeah. It just, uh, means we're smart and you're dumb and we're spying on you and <laughs> you think it's high tech and uh, you're a schmuck. That's basically um, what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So do you think Maxwell is eventually going to slip and fall on a noose? Or, uh, I don't you think know so. I mean? Or they wouldn't have moved her to country club prison. Got I it. think if it was something like that, she probably would have stayed in the the MCC or whatever it's called in New York. Like Epstein, well, that's where Epstein was killed, right? So um, these other more country club prisons, it's harder, I think, to do that kind of stuff because that particular prison where Epstein you know, was off or whatever, I mean, people, it's well known that it's like really corrupt and it's really easy to pay off the guards and get stuff smuggled in and all of that stuff. I don't necessarily think that all prisons are that easy. Right. right. I'm not an expert on the prison system, but I have a feeling that country club prisons are a lot more like, you know, it's it's a different kind of world than some notoriously corrupt, you know, NYC urban prison. Uh, so that's just that a makes, hunch. That's, I, that's what I would think. I think what's likely is once you get involved in like country club prison, um, you know, it's pretty clear that I think she could even get let off early for good behavior. Yeah, and is she or something like that. 
Yeah, she's I'd, gonna hang out in somebody's yacht during the day and then come back for you know work leave. Bet. I don't yeah. know. It could happen yeah. in a couple of years, and I mean, who would know? Uh, because the the world will be exploding, so it's not like people will be noticing. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, and that's sort of how they've done it with this case. You know, uh, like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. How much trial did that get? Uh, coverage did that that get right? And how much yeah. attention did this trial get? It was unreal. They were happening. Where were the questions time. about Jean-Luc Brunel's death? I mean, people are like, oh, None. suspicious. Wasn't that? And then, you know, it's no more I, questions. The mainstream yeah. media literally put Brunel's death on the, on the ticker across the bottom. That's how I, I was like, wow, they didn't even mention it. They just yeah. was like, Jean-Luc Brunel uh, committed suicide in prison. And then literally just like the next line was like, you know, yeah, a cat jumped in that a was supposedly a because of a French investigation. We know very little about Epstein and Maxwell's activities in France, except that there was a residence that they maintained there in Paris. Um, but, you know, Jean-Luc Brunel was very involved in Paris modeling um, and was actually uh, the subject of, I think, a 1989 60 Minutes expose of how he was basically uh, engaging in the behavior he later enabled Epstein to do that far back um and still uh, big people in the modeling industry like faith cates were like i'm going to team up with that guy even though he was just exposed by 60 minutes uh and accused of drugging and raping girls and stuff <laughs> uh, so, i mean it's just it's insane so like um the french investigation i haven't heard anything about that now that brunel's yeah. dead sounds like it was closed to me uh as, as far as i can tell i'd love to be wrong about that but it seems sort of like oh investigations open we're gonna nail you brunel oh you've been silenced oh our investigation is also coincidentally silenced and gone um i haven't heard know. anything about peter nygaard as well because they all got arrested no, maxwell brunel yeah. nygaard all got arrested mm -hmm. around the same time and then nygaard nothing i've heard nothing yeah it's uh oh yeah so the, and obviously, and, and for the audience, our audience should very much know these ties that, that you've, you've discovered. I've discovered there's always like the fashion industry, um, banking, the yeah. intelligence community. Those are like the main three. The banking stuff. I, I should, uh, since I only have a couple minutes left, the banking stuff is really big. I think Epstein's financial crimes are on the same scale as his sex crimes for sure. 100%. This guy is a major financial criminal, and that's why it's so crazy that all of his involvement with the Clinton White House in the 90s based around insane illegal fundraisers. And then he gets brought on to plan the Clinton Foundation for Bill Clinton. Oh, <laughs> so why wow. would you... Why would you get a guy who claims to be a financial spy who hides looted money for powerful people in the 1980s and plans one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in U.S. history with Stephen Hofferberg at Towers Financial? Why would you recruit him and have him be a major figure in several of your major fundraising campaigns that later get investigated by Congress and covered up by the Justice Department? And then why would you have him set up your philanthropic foundation after you leave office? Uh, and the same thing for the Gates Foundation, too. He was really involved with that as well. Um, and lots of billionaire uh, philanthropic foundations like Leon Black's family foundation. He ran it, the Wexner Foundation. Uh, he was a trustee there um, involved in numerous other philanthropies. So, you know, I think we should be asking a little bit about uh, how, how deep those ties run. But no one wants to talk about the financial stuff or the banking stuff. And think about it. The only case, criminal case involving Epstein after his 2019 arrest where like someone was like innocent was popped off is the Deutsche Bank case about Epstein. And it was the, the judge's son was shot. And I guess it was supposed to be her that was shot. Uh, remember that? Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, that that's also another suspicious death that went nowhere. I guess we can't talk about the Deutsche Bank connection to Epstein. Or how he basically collapsed Bear Stearns single-handedly. It's one of these crazy stories. The more you that, Those are insane it. financial crimes. Think about it. Major Ponzi yeah. scheme, major involvement in the most illegal fundraisers the Clintons have ever done and the creation of their political slush fund, right? Uh, personally popped the Bear Stearns bubble, which essentially leads to the 2008 economic crisis. That's just the 2008. I'm like not, we know very little about his activities in the 1980s when he was admittedly uh, working in like offshore banking and, and illegal money laundering networks and stuff, 
right? So I think the financial crimes, I don't want anyone to look at. And that's why the Deutsche Bank stuff is like, ugh, for sure. Yeah, because then it, there's way more people that are implicated. And and the financial crime too yeah. is, is, it's actually easier to prove in terms of hard evidence because the yes. video files of the assaults and with, with the, with the children, someone had th those are hidden somewhere, but we can, we can go probably go online and, and find the financial crimes right now. You know what I mean? And that's why yeah. they want that hidden. But there's uh, a lot to think about just with the financial stuff. You know, what does it mean that a guy that was sex trafficking linked to intelligence after he gets busted the first time, uh, personally pops, uh, the economic like bubble in the U S and co almost collapses the economy. Epstein. How I know you got to go, but Jesus, this is, how did he, how did he personally pop Bear Stearns? So, so there were two funds that were in trouble and basically Epstein went there and demanded money out of it, even though he knew that they were like going to fail if he did that and he did it and then it collapsed. That's the short version. I mean, it's a lot more complicated than that. There, there's a, a guy that wrote about it. I forget, uh, I forget his name. I'm really sorry. I've forgotten his name like two times, uh, but I can send you the article later if you want to read it. It's it's called like, did Jeffrey Epstein initiate the 2008 financial crisis? There's a lot to think about there in the context of like the intelligence ties and his past financial activities. Very send me that article. Stuff. Absolutely yeah, for send sure. Me that article. I mean, it's mental because think about it. It's a huge wealth transfer. And Epstein's whole network in the 1980s was intimately involved with the savings and loans crisis. Um, a lot of people at the Drexel, Burn and Lambert Bank, which were really like responsible for that junk bond, like explosion and all of that stuff. That was a huge wealth transfer. $600 billion at the time and in the 80s going into the hands of these guys. They take over corporate America. And that's in people at that bank are people like Leon Black, Ron Perlman, people known to be associated with Epstein. And it was run really by like Michael Milken, uh, who's now a philanthropist now, <laughs> the Milken Institute, if you've heard of it. Um, oh, he's a he's like a convicted financial felon, but got pardoned uh, by Trump. No, I think by Trump, actually. Yeah. Um, so uh, fun crowd. Anyway, yeah, the financial crimes are, are very substantial. And I think people need to start um, poking around in there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll start. Send me these articles. I'll start because I haven't. Yeah. I've done no videos with ties to the financial world on Epstein. Very few. I mean, I did. I covered the Deutsche Bank thing, but I really haven't gone. Well, because it that. hasn't been the focus, right? right? But I think it's time that people start to look at it a little bit because it's very significant. I mean, Robert Maxwell. What did? What is he best known for before the Epstein stuff exploded and being Ghislaine Maxwell's dad? Uh, financial crimes, stealing pension fund money and a bunch of other stuff, right? That's what these guys do. I mean, they're serial uh, looters right. and, and they're also sex traffickers. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of conversations that need to be had about Epstein and there's a lot about Epstein that that um, is going to keep coming out. And it's going to be really clear, um, I think over time that sex trafficking was just part of what was going on here and that there's a much larger network that enabled him that's still, um, you know, doing the same shit. You know, he's like, like you said earlier, middle management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we're heading into another financial of recession. We're in a recession right now. We're going to have probably some other financial collapse because nobody regulated Obama, Bush, none of these people regulated the fi last financial crisis at all. And so we're going into another one. There's all, I call it, talk about financial stuff a lot, the bubbles that are being created. That's why yeah. I encourage my audience to buy Bitcoin. And I have for two years. Cause I'm like, get ready. Cause the banks are going to go belly up. And now that we know that these awful assholes are involved in it's this. It's a wealth transfer. Right. The, these networks have been taking your money and giving it to themselves over and over again. Why do the rich keep getting richer? Why during COVID-19 did like the billionaires get like super, super, super wealthy and everyone else got poor? And why did that happen in 2008 and all of these other things? And why were there never prosecutions for the people that caused, uh, you know, those Ever. economic crises? or policies. Wow. I mean, you're right. A hundred new billion. Yeah, think about it. And this has been going on for how many decades now? How many crises have, have happened in this exact same pattern involving the same, same, like the same banks and the same people. I mean, we we're being taken for a ride, dude. We're being totally looted, uh, by a bunch of people who fuck kids. <laughs> Anyway, I have to go. <laughs> no, that's Sorry, that's how we end mind. the interview on. That's yeah. we end it right there. Um, tell everyone again and where the books were and where they can go get it. 
Okay, so my book is uh, One Nation Under Blackmail, Volumes 1 and 2, um, and you can uh, buy it uh, directly from the publisher, Trine Day, T-R-I-N-E Day, um, and also, uh, you know, any other places where, where books are sold, really, um, including Amazon, um, and if you're in Europe, uh, we're looking for some more uh, local um, distributors, so uh, you don't have to worry about international shipping costs, which have gone way up, uh, but there will also be an ebook and audiobook version. Whitney, thank you so much for taking time to come on the show. I know you're you're tired. I know you've been doing a lot of interviews and uh, it's great having you on the show. Once again, every time I think I know about Epstein, you come here and just blow my mind away. No, and I, yeah, and I, and I mean, I, it's crazy and it's going to get crazier the, the more stuff that comes out and the more people who actually start thinking on the stuff that they've been trying to keep uh, us away from also. <laughs> well, uh, send me those articles. Thank you for coming on the show, Whitney. And we really, really, really appreciate all the work that you're doing. So support what Whitney's doing, but everybody hit the like button, follow her on social media. Whitney, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.